So you're probably wondering, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> yep, we were stuck in Tokyo and here's how that went. To start off, we landed in Tokyo the first day and we went um, from Narita Airport straight to the hotel, went to bed. Next day we woke up, we we're ready to go to Kyoto, right? Bro, we showed up. I scanned my I scanned my card, not knowing really how to buy how, how to get into the bullet train, but I kind of read up on it, so I kind of knew what to do. So I scanned my card and said it wasn't working, and I'm like, mm, let me scan it again. Scan it a second time, wasn't working. And then the guy, the operator over there, was just like pointing at the sign because he could tell I'm a foreigner, and it says it was all in Japanese, so we had to translate the sign first of all, and it basically said like, hey, we're actually down. Can you come back? and rechange your ticket to 12 p.m. And I'm like, oh my goodness. It was seven, we got there at 7 a.m. and there was news reporters, there was people filming, people being interviewed. And then when I Googled it, it was actually an accident that happened. You could see like from the station, everyone scrambling around. There was long lines for the help center. But honestly, we were just stuck in Tokyo for the first day and I didn't plan to have a day in Tokyo. Um, so we ended up exploring Ginza. We ended up in a katsu restaurant where I got pork katsu, obviously. Um, and it was served with a nice, nice little miso soup. So yeah, that was like actually our first meal of the day of like the whole event. And let me tell you, I was eating that shit up because honestly, I was so hungry and I was starving. And so by then, the bullet train never got back up. So we had to actually book another hotel in Tokyo while I already paid for another hotel in Kyoto and was hoping that the bullet train came back on the next day and luckily it did. So the next day we actually head on over to Kyoto. When we got to the hotel, they had the cutest little dinosaurs, just like, it's basically self-service <laughs> and you could check in from their devices their machines it's like a self check-in then after we checked in we kind of settled down unpacked and we went to grab lunch my friend that was actually in japan recommended me this restaurant she went to in kyoto and it's called gyonduk gyonduk not sure how it's pronounced and this is the reality of filming people you gotta go back and get your camera there's this little sign at the restaurant well you'll see a little sign and it's just emojis Right when you walk into the alley, you'll see a sign where it says, hey, this is the gyon or gyonduk for ramen, and then there's a rice version for it. And I was in a mood for the ramen spot, so we went to the ramen spot instead, but it's two different locations owned by the same people. And once you go into the alleyway, you'll see the little emoji, and basically you just wait in line. So we lined up, but they don't let anyone into the restaurant just yet. So basically how it works is that you stay in line and then the owner or the manager comes out and gives you the menu and the menu is actually really cute it's only emojis so when i opened it up i was like what the f is this like wh what are we ordering are we ordering just based on emojis once you open it up you're kind of in shock but then the manager slash owner kind of walks you through exactly what each emoji or each line is so it's a pretty interesting concept there's only eight seats in the restaurant and we were the last pair to get in and as you can see it's really small i think i already mentioned it already but it's a really really small restaurant here is sean and i trying out their beer they actually have their own signature beer i don't know what type of beer it is my boyfriend is a beer connoisseur i know he likes ipas and there's it's, uh, that, that's all i know that's all I know about beer, IPA beers and um, dark beer, light beer, I don't know. Beer. <laughs> Once they're done prepping the dishes, basically the manager or the owner comes and serves it to you at the table and again, kind of re-explains what the dish is. And as you always know, Instagram pictures always eat first. So we gotta take pictures before we start and try the dish. Some fish. Yeah. And then it's some 
some good shit. That is some good shit. Mm -hmm. It was so freaking good. It was so good. It was so tasty. Like, I can't even explain how good it was. I think I would have added extra... Um, meat and so once we were done we paid for a meal and when we left the restaurant there was a huge lineup for the restaurant so i was so happy we came for opening so if you really want to try out this place i'm gonna link down below their instagram or their google site whatever it is i highly recommend this place it's really good later that night we went to nishigi market <laughs> i'm saying it right we went to nishigi market let me google this nishiki Nishiki market. Sorry, 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 sorry. Saw the first dumpling place. I honestly, I was starving. <laughs> okay. I have no brain cells, but I'm hungry. And we got some dumplings, wagyu and chicken or pork? pork? Wagyu and pork, that's what we got. And that's our first purchase at the Nishiki, Nishiki market. Oh, oh, this is the perfect chance to use the white side. <laughs> what I say, what I say. In Japan, they give you these wet wipes everywhere you go. Even if you're using utensils to eat, they give you wet wipes. Well, I think they're actually like napkins. Because so they don't come, they don't give they don't you give napkins. napkins. Should we cheers this? <laughs> I would have liked the pickle, but the pickle. Taste test. Oh my gosh, Jenny. Whoa. It's really sweet and good. Yeah. Try it. So then we walked around and then the next thing we tried was potato chips. Honestly, it's not anything new. I just freaking love sweet potato chips. Then after that, we tried eel. Sean really likes their eel, so we tried the eel. It was good. And then we just continued walking into the market and honestly, most of the things started closing. It was like 6 p.m. So I think the market closes around 6. But there were still a lot of people walking around. So that's how we ended our day. The next day we headed to... Where did we go? <laughs> I don't know what this place is called. It's called the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. So we headed there and basically this is a popular site to go to in Kyoto. So we woke up actually at 5 in the morning to get there and there was a few people. I wouldn't say there was a lot, a lot, but as like it got to 6 a.m., 7 a.m., there was more people that came in. So I was really happy we went at 5 a.m. Freaking obnoxious tripod. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. So I'm here to give you a rundown on summer in Japan. The starter kit of summer in Japan. The first thing you need is this mother right here. This Take all my money. I would spend all my money on this. I would buy 10 other ones. This is a neck fan. And look, when you're traveling around, you're gonna be using your phone a lot. You're gonna be looking for stuff, paying for stuff. Having this and being hands Ooh. having this and being hands free is really good. So highly recommend there is a Japanese man walking by and I'm gonna just chill out. <clears throat> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Back to the topic. This combined with the Biore wipes, ice cold Biore cool monster dish wipe it on your arms your back your neck your nipples your your stomach with the fan combo hands down you'll be solid and make sure you have ice in your water bottle that's it highly f recommend right now we are in ari you know i'm really sounding like a gringo out here but ari shiyama ari shiyama the bamboo stuff, bamboo grove, that's where I'm at. It's a hype place, so I thought I would come and visit. There are lotuses behind me. They're absolutely beautiful with 
frogs. That's the vibe. It's been a nice day. So after the bamboo forest, we went to Fushimi Inari Taisha. We walked through that. Honestly, it was so touristy. There's so many people that were walking in it. So we just walked a little bit up and then walked back down and then went back to our hotel. And so the next day we headed to Osaka. And honestly, I think Osaka was my favorite part of, or like my favorite city of the the whole trip so the first place we went to was this restaurant called oh let me search it up because i deleted my google maps it was called wagyu itaden basically it's this little i wouldn't say a bento box but it's this little box where they have rice and then you select what meat you want and some of it has raw egg on top some of it doesn't his was honestly better sometimes when you just see someone eat something theirs always looks better than yours and then after we ate our meal we just just so happened to walk through dotonbori 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 girl so we walked there and we saw the little runner guy glico and honestly this place does not look real like Osaka does not look real. It's just so much things happening. So many signs, so many just people, just so many noises, just a lot going on. And this place just felt like it was a place out of a comic book. Like it just feels unreal to be there. And so the first night we were in Osaka, my friend actually sent me an article telling me to go to this festival that's happening. I think it's called the Tension Festival. And basically during the Tension Festival, there is usually fireworks. And so I told Sean, I was like, let's go freaking see some fireworks in Osaka. Like we're in Japan and we're gonna go watch some fireworks. We took the metro there, but everything was blocked off. And the amount of anxiety I got from all of the people leaving the metro station, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna have a good time because there is just way too many people. It's so crowded. My anxiety started flaring up and I was like, kind of like, we just got here, but I kind of want to go home because there's so many people. And when we started walking away from the crowds towards the temple, I realized that it was not that many people. Like it's starting to get spaced out. So I started enjoying it. And then we got to the temple and there was a show happening. People were dancing on stage and there was fireworks happening in the background in the sky. And it was, it was really, honestly, it was a good time. And then the next day, the next freaking day, we went to Universal. And man, I tell you, I did some research on Universal because we just basically wanted to go to Super Nintendo. Oh my God. Okay. So the first thing you have to do to get into Super Nintendo without like a guaranteed ticket ticket is that you need to show up before the park opens. If the park says they open at 9 a.m., you need to show up at 8 a.m. I accidentally thought the park was opening at 8 a.m right but no the park opened at 9 a.m so we showed up at 7. anyways it's super complicated on how to get in but we got in and i was so happy we got in people low-key were just like running towards it um which i was like honestly it's way too hot for me to be running right now but seeing like the little asian families running i'm like should i be running too because why are you guys all running and then when you walk through the tunnel and like you see the whole Super Nintendo world, it just felt so fake. Like everything just looks so perfect. It was like a great experience. We did the Mario Kart ride and honestly, that Mario Kart ride made me feel like a child again. Like part of the ride, you go into Rainbow Road and mind blowing. If you ever go, you need to try out this ride. Like it's honestly worth the full money of like the whole day I paid for the Super Nintendo world. And so once we got done with Osaka, we did other things, which I didn't vlog. Honestly, it's so hard to vlog when it's so hot outside. And we traveled back to Tokyo. While traveling back to Tokyo, we had the two-seater sides. And that's where you could see Mount Fuji. As you can see here, it was covered by the freaking clouds. So I didn't get to see Mount Fuji from, uh, I mean, I technically saw the bottom of it, but like you want to see the cap of it. 
And then once we got to Tokyo, we walked from Shinjuku Station all the way to our hotel, which was the Grand Bell Shinjuku Hotel. We finally checked in. Oh my god, it was such a journey here. I mean, it's it was only a 12 minute walk, but honestly, whenever it's like 45 degrees outside, it's unbearable. Like 12 minutes feels like 12 minutes of you in hell. Um, so we finally made it to our hotel. I honestly booked a smaller hotel. I think it was like 116 square feet or square meters. I don't really know which one it was, but um, that was the same size we were at in Tokyo. And I realized 118 cannot fit all four of our luggages. So I was like, we, we have to upgrade. So I upgraded to another hotel, but I was like, I'm going to pay the extra $200 more for a bigger room because I I cannot, like we don't have space. So this one's not too bad. It's still pretty small, but still doable. Like we're able to like leave our luggages here and still have room to walk around. Now we got here, I think it's about 3.30. We're gonna settle in, wash up a little bit because we're sweaty. And then we're gonna head to conveyor belt sushi. We tried to have conveyor belt sushi at Sushi Shiro. I think that's like the famous branch out here. So we're gonna have that. I'm really excited to have conveyor belt sushi only because I've just been seeing it online in places. So yeah, we're just gonna settle in and I'll catch you guys later when we're at conveyor belt sushi. All right, we're here. I got my two plates. I have no idea what I'm looking for. I got another food. So chaotic. Let's have a That's where you get your cup. That's where you put your water. So the way it works is that you order through an iPad. Once you order it through an iPad, there's the conveyor belt just going around. And if it is your dish, it's gonna go into your slot. And then you're gonna hear a sound, a chime of the sound. And so you know that's your dish, but it also stops at your station. Over here, they show you all of your orders. I tried the broiled for broiled soy otoro. It's this thing here. I don't know what this is, but this shit tastes Freaking good. So I told Sean to, oh, oh, <laughs> what's the reaction? <laughs> this is like playing. <laughs> I feel like I'm having fun. I got myself a third one because it was so good. But yeah, so we did many other things in Japan. I have just random clips of it that I could compile here. We went to Team Labs. We went to Shibuya Crossing. Let me tell you, Shibuya Crossing is really underwhelming. We walked past by it. We did not even know Shibuya Crossing. And then after we did our shopping, we walked back to it and I was like, crap, we walked by here and we did not know this was Shibuya Crossing. Then we did some eating, obviously we did some eating. Did some shopping. We ate, um, team lab, um, what else? I didn't really film much because it's just, it's so hot. It was a great trip. I honestly complained a lot about the heat. Like the heat was the only thing that made the trip like, mm. but overall it was a great experience. I freaking love the culture. I love how people are so nice, so accommodating. Yeah, I really enjoyed the Tokyo trip overall. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy this style of vlog. I honestly might not be doing more of this. Maybe I will. I'm only doing this because I didn't really talk much in the vlog. So I'm gonna do some talking at home rather than in Japan. Yeah, but I hope you enjoy and I have a part two in Korea coming up.